Hello, everybody. Hello. It's so great to see you. Oh, we're going to have so much fun today. We're going to have so much fun today. Uh, I see we have some new people today. Kathy, it's so great to see you. Thanks for joining us. This is your first time with us live. Welcome back to everybody else. I'm so glad to see you. Diane, thank you so much for moderating our chat. Oh, it's so great to see you. Dort, you'll be in and out, but you'll try to be here most of the time. Great. Hello, everybody. Teresa, you said, I need food. I just wolfed down my lunch in like two minutes, which is kind of sad because it was so good and I would have really liked to have taken my time, but I waited to the last minute to eat. <laughs> Marlon's like, you better eat before you go live. You're going to be hangry. <laughs> I was like, okay. It's so great to see you. Today, we're going to have a lot of fun. I'm going to show you two different projects. I'm going to show you uh, a project that I did for my parents. It's for my parents' camper with a faux wonky border with scraps. And I did it with a glue stick. So this project is very uh, budget friendly. <laughs> we all have scraps, right? You save all your little tidbits and I'm um, using a glue stick. I'm going to show you, I'm going to give you the measurements for both projects on the screen. So grab a piece of paper and a pencil so you can write them down. That way it keeps the pattern cost free, right? There's no written pattern for these projects, but I'm going to give you all the information that you need to make them. That way we keep the patterns free, right? I do have some graphics in today's video. I'm going to be using some camping graphics. Uh, like the one that I used to make my shirt. Uh, those are in my Etsy shop. There's links down below. I'm going to show you those first. And then I'll show you the project I made for my parents. And then we're going to make one together for myself. It's going to be lots of fun. So great to see everybody. If you're watching on the replay, you can feel free to skip around uh, because we are doing this uh, video live. And so we will be chatting. <laughs> I love the chatting part with everybody. So feel free if you're watching on the replay to skip around if you just want to get to the nitty gritty good stuff, right? Oh, it's so great to see you. So great to see you. Ella, I love nutty bars. Those are so good. I haven't had one of those in a long time. For me, those are something that you absolutely love, but I tend to forget about them. And when I have one, I'm like, whoa, <laughs> that is so good. <clears throat> Vicki wants to know if everyone would call Walmart and tell them to put all their craft supplies back in the store, please. <laughs> They're trying to cut it out again. Thank you. Hello, everybody. Jill's eating breakfast. Oh, it's so great to see you. So, yes, let's get to the good stuff. Let's get to the good stuff. I'm going to try to keep this video short, <laughs> but it's probably not going to be short. Feel free to leave and come back if you need to. And if you do have to go to do something else, just come back on the replay. That's the awesome part of YouTube, right? That's the awesome part of YouTube. So let me switch the screen over. We're going to dive right in. Dun, dun, dun. There we go. All right. So right underneath of my picture, you're going to see all of the dimensions for the first project I'm going to show you, which is the project that I made for my parents. Okay. <clears throat> Before we do that, I know several of you might be wondering, where do you get the graphics if you want to make the camping stuff that goes in these projects but if you're not into camping or you don't know anyone who is uh you can replace the camping stuff with your own stuff right these projects lend perfectly to your own designs so uh but yes this is the graphics that i'm going to be using in today's video so in my etsy shop yesterday i loaded up a couple of listings let me show you these two first there is a listing for five SVG files of campers, okay? And you get all five of these campers. You can uh, use the ones that you want. You can resize them in your cutting software. You can customize, like I did this t-shirt. 
just like this. You can cut them out of regular vinyl, craft vinyl. You can make stencils. Thank you so much, Miss Teresa. And uh, heat transfer vinyl. You can cut it out of cardstock and make greeting cards. All the things you can do with the SVGs. This listing is for the five SVG files. Okay, so you get the five campers. And then there's a separate listing of blank backgrounds so that you can customize uh, your saying. Like the shirt I used, uh, this is how we roll. And then I brought in this camper because it looks most like ours and put it right in the middle. So I used both files to customize my own graphics for my t-shirt, right? So this listing, you get the five blank uh, backgrounds. And then there are five more listings where I've done a lot of work for you. You get uh, this as an SVG with the camper already in it. And this is what it would look like. And there's a PDF in this listing. So if you don't have a cutting machine, but you want to trace this, uh, you could easily trace this with like a fabric marker and then do some free motion quilting if you wanted to do that. So there is a PDF for this and this is uh, as an SVG as well. So you have this one, you have this one, you have this one and this one. That's cute. I like that one. And this one. And this is the one that I used to make my mom's project. So you'll see that here in a second. And in case you're wondering, the type of vinyl that I used uh, for my mom's project, it is the Casa Heat Transfer Vinyl Sheets. I did put a listing down below if you want to check it out, but it's certainly not the only kind of heat transfer vinyl. It's just the kind that I have on stock right now, so that's what I used. So all of those things are in the Etsy shop. Let me show you the project that I made for my parents. Ta-da! So on the screen, the top fabric, the batting, the backing, and the pocket. There are all of the sizes to make this project, right? And I used the Casa Heat Transfer Vinyl. It doesn't even feel like there's anything on there. Uh, but yes, I did a faux wonky border with scraps and a glue stick. So that's what I'm going to show you. These are all the little tidbit scraps that I have left over. You could certainly apply heat and bond light or a fusible adhesive on the back of your fabric before you cut your scraps and go that way too. There's always more than one way to do any project, right? But I didn't necessarily want to use up a bunch of heat and bond light on a bunch of different colors, so I just cut a bunch of squares from some scraps and used a glue stick. So that's what I'm going to show you today. Okay? So those are my leftover scraps for from this project. And then I just used a uh, stitch on my machine. I'll show you that here in a minute to sew them down. When I did this project, I'm going to show you the back. I had this. Isn't that pretty? <laughs> my friend Sally sent me some uh, charm packs. And I had put together this piece. And it just worked out that it was big enough to use as the backing and the binding for this project. So I was like, okay. Let's do that. So in this project, uh, I did layer all three layers, the top, the batting, and the backing, before I stitched down my wonky border. So you will see that when I stitched everything down, it did quilt all three layers. So you can do it that way if you want. That's super cute. <laughs> and then I used the back as the binding, which makes it really fast, right? Or you can do it the way that I'm going to do mine and just put everything together with the top and the batting and stitch everything down and then put your backing on so you have a nice, clean, smooth backing. You could do it either way, but I wanted to show you both. So for hers, she wanted some pockets, so I cut out their name and put it on the pocket. You could do that or not. 
And then, um, yeah, she wanted pockets. And so I added the pocket and then I just stitched right down the middle. And so it's just like this. So that is the perfect size for the little wall space that she wanted to put something to customize their camper. <clears throat> what was the name of the heat transfer vinyl that you used? It was the CASA, K-A-S-S-A. There's a link for it down in the description box. Uh, this box came with, I think there were 30 sheets, is that right? Yeah, 30. And you can use an iron or a heat press. So in today's demonstration, I'm using an iron. When I made my shirt, I used the heat press. So you could use either or. You don't have to have a heat press for this vinyl. So that's kind of nice, right? <laughs> So let me show you how I put this together real quick, and then we're going to make the one that I am keeping for our camper, okay? Just move that to the side. So let's pretend that this is going to be our project. This is the top fabric, nine and a half inches wide and 18 inches long. Now, of course, you can customize this idea to your own measurements as well. I'm just giving you what you see that I'm demonstrating today. So this is nine and a half by 18 inches long. You will need a batting that is at least this big, and then you can trim it up if it's bigger, but it needs to also be nine and a half by 18 when you're done. And the backing fabric, uh, I cut at 11 and a half by 20 inches, and that gave me an extra inch all the way around to fold over and use it as my binding. Okay, so I didn't have to make an additional binding for this project. For the pocket, you're gonna need a piece of fabric that is nine and a half inches wide, the same as the top of your little quilty, and 12 inches long. And what I did so that it would have a finished edge at the top of the pocket is just fold it completely in half. And once my little quilt was all quilted, I put it just like this and then just lined it up with the raw edges of my little quilt top, just like that. And then I did the binding right over top of the raw edges and then took my sewing machine and stitched uh, a little line right in the middle to make two pockets. You could leave this open as one great big pocket as well, but because we folded it over, it has a nice finished edge at the top. You could do a little binding, right? A little binding strip right there. That would be cute too. Or you could make the whole project without a pocket and the whole thing would just be a longer little art quilt. So those are the measurements right there on the screen for this project here. And I think it turned out so cute. <laughs> it turned out so cute. You could do a solid piece of fabric. You don't have to customize it with names at the bottom. You could get as creative as you wanted to with that part, but wouldn't that be super cute to use this fabric as the backing and then bind it with uh, the same uh, little teal floral all the way around. Wouldn't that be so cute? Hello, everybody. So great to see you. Uh, Ari, these are all, it's all uh, quilter's cotton. Today, I'm not using any t-shirt material. You could. You could do this out of t-shirt material if you wanted to, but this is all just cotton. And uh, yeah, so let me show you. If you wanted to use the PDF to trace one of these designs, like if you don't have a cutting machine and you can't do like heat transfer vinyl, you could put this right under and take a little fabric marker and just trace that right onto your background. <laughs> Wouldn't that be cute? <laughs> so yeah, so for those, I did offer the PDF just in case. I know not everybody has a vinyl cutter, but you might want to use the camping graphics. So 
there is an option for a different way to create a project for your campers. But what's also really great is if you do craft booths or craft fairs, if you have an Etsy shop, if you sell online your craft stuff, I do allow for uh, selling of your handmade items using uh, my Etsy stuff. So if you're in an area that has a lot of campers and you'd like to use these graphics to make t-shirts, maybe you're doing a t-shirt business. <laughs> and you have a lot of camping friends that would buy t-shirts, you can use the graphics to make items to sell. So that's great. So great to see you. So uh, as we do the live, if you have any questions for me, it would be really helpful if you put them in all caps. And that way, if, if I scroll through, I can see your questions pretty easy. I'm gonna fold that up nice and neat because I'm gonna make that into a project later. <laughs> Just put that right off to the side. So for mine, I'm gonna bring this over. Mine, I uh, have a little bit of a bigger wall space I wanna put my project in. And I wanted mine to kind of look like a chalkboard. So I'm doing, uh, it's not quite black. It's almost like a dark, dark charcoal gray. Kind of looks black on the screen, but it's not. Let me pull up the measurements for the project we're doing together. There you go. This is cut 15 by 15 inches. I have a batting that is cut 15 by 15. And I have a backing fabric for this project that is cut 17 by 17. I'm going to use the backing as the binding for this project. Mimsy, this particular vinyl, no. You do not have to have a heat press for this, um, this particular vinyl. There's a lot of them out there that you can use that you don't have to have the heat press. Uh, what caught my eye when I was shopping on Amazon was you didn't have to have, because I bought this before I bought my heat press. <laughs> so it's like, okay, let me get this one. And I really like it. Some of the colors aren't the easiest to weed out, but most of them are pretty easy to weed your design. And I like it because it has a really good thick carrier sheet. And uh, so the chances of me setting my blade incorrectly, there's a little forgiveness there. Not much. I have cut through it, but... Yeah, it's got a nice heavy-duty carrier sheet, and uh, it did come with a little weeding tool and a Teflon sheet, so that was nice. But no, you don't have to have a heat press for this one. And I liked it because it came in 30 colors, although I quickly ran out of white. That was the first color I used, and you only get like a couple of sheets of each one of the colors. So I have some white ordered. It's not here yet. So for my chalkboard, <laughs> I had to use this little baby blue color. So it's not exactly going to look exactly like a chalkboard like I had hoped, but it's going to be pretty close. And I think that still looks pretty fantastic. So I went ahead and cut out the vinyl. Uh, this is the heat transfer. This is the clear part is the carrier sheet. The SVGs are mirror imaged, so if you're using heat transfer vinyl, you're ready to cut them out. If you're going to cut them out of craft vinyl, uh, you'll need to mirror image them. But yes, here's the little graphic I'm going to use for my chalkboard, just like that. Right in the middle. Just like that. Oh, <laughs> Just like that. And then I have a whole big smorgasbord of, let me move all of this stuff, of scraps for this project. This is like uh, my paint palette. <laughs> I'm going to move you over here. I'm going to move you right there. So let me take this off the screen. I'll pull it back up if we need to. But you see, I have a bunch of scraps. There's my little paint palette for this project. I just went to town. I pulled a bunch of different colors and I cut them into different size scraps. There's no heat and bond. There's no fusible. 
We're keeping it very, very budget friendly for today's project. <laughs> and a glue stick. You could use wet glue. You could do that also. But I, today I'm just using the uh, Elmer's washable school glue stick. And uh, it's the purple one, which I really wish it wasn't purple. Sometimes if you use too much on lighter fabrics, the purple doesn't go away. I don't like that. But this is the one I have on hand and it worked pretty well in my mom's project. So I'm just gonna leave this right kind of in the center and we're gonna build a border, a faux wonky border right around it, just using a bunch of different scraps. All right, and uh, this is not technical. Uh, when I was making my, my parents' little project, I knew I wanted to do a wonky border with different size pieces, but I was like, how would you piece, how would you piece all of that together? It would be so confusing and so time consuming. You see like this piece is bigger than that one and they're just random. Can you imagine trying to piece that? That would just, no. <laughs> so I was like, there's got to be an easier, faster way to do that. And so I brought out the glue stick and that's what we did. So I'm just going to start piecing this in and y'all feel free to chit chat while I'm doing this and it's not difficult. I'm just adding a little bit of glue stick to the back side of my fabric around the edges and right in the center. I'm not even coating the whole thing, just a little bit, just enough to hold it down until I sew everything down. And this is so not even technical. You just line it up with the raw edge. <laughs> you can overlap them if you want. We will be sewing all of this down once we're done. So this is one of those great projects if you're feeling creative, but you don't have a lot of time or maybe you just got done with a great big project that took like everything you had to get it right and you need a project that you can just mindlessly do with some music on or maybe one of your favorite shows <laughs> because this takes absolutely no concentration to keep your seam allowance at an accurate quarter inch seam, <laughs> it takes all of that fussiness away, right? And I'm just gonna piece them all around the edge, just like this. Projects like these are one of the reasons why I don't get rid of many scraps at all. I don't get rid of many scraps. I love to do applique anyway. So for that reason alone, I don't get rid of scraps. But I also love doing these little art projects, these little art quilts. And they're great little uh, stash busters for your scraps. And what's fun about this, oh, I got a little glob right there. What's fun about this, y'all, is you don't even have to really do the camping graphics, right? You could put Lisa's Kitchen in the middle, and you could do it in applique. You don't even have to have heat transfer vinyl, right? You could just do it in applique or with a fabric marker. So it doesn't have to be camping related. <laughs> I'm just making this particular project for my camper, so. Dun, 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 dun. Will that piece fit there? Ooh, it fits perfectly. Using a glue gun for a symbol, would this be 
a glue gun. Uh, we're going to be sewing all of this, all of the raw edges down once we're done with the gluing process, Miss Peggy. And so, uh, I don't know that I would use a glue gun, but if you meant glue stick, yes, you could wash this, but the, here's the thing, okay? We're going to take this over to the sewing machine as soon as I get all the pieces glued in place and I really dry it with the iron. We'll be stitching down all the raw edges. Now, because this doesn't have any kind of fusible on the back side, if you don't want your little fabric squares to fray, if you're going to wash this, then I would use like a satin stitch, right? Really, really sew down all of those edges. I'm going to be using a, like a decorative stitch, and I don't plan on washing this, but... Uh, you could, you just might have a little bit of fraying if you don't really get all of those edges really well. The glue would just wash out if you wash this. So you do have to sew down your pieces. Yes, Miss Dort. Yep, we'll be sewing this here in just a minute. Hello, everybody. Hello. <clears throat> dun, 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 dun. See, I have a bunch of different size pieces. Ooh, let's throw some of this in there. All the glue is really doing is just holding it in place temporarily until we can sew it down. Now, if you did not want to sew this at all, here's what you could do. You could get some of the heat and bond in the red package, the permanent one, and put that on the back side of your fabric. And then cut out all of your pieces. And you don't even really have to do squares and rectangles, right? You could do all sorts of shapes. And then when you fuse that, it's all permanent and you wouldn't have to sew anything, right? <laughs> that would make it fast and simple. I kind of like the look of the decorative stitch that holds these pieces in place, though. Now, this piece might be a little bit too big for that. We'll trim it up in a little bit. But you can see I'm not really being that fussy over putting the pieces down. This one does hang off the edge. That's okay. I'll trim that off here in, the, in just a little bit. Yeah. Ah, da 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 da. Da da da. Yep, we'll have to trim all that. <laughs> There we go. That's all right. Yep, this is not any kind of special glue stick. It's just the Elmer's washable school glue stick. It's the one that's purple, which, to be really honest, I don't like the fact that it's purple. It's supposed to disappear when it's dry. But I've noticed that sometimes, if I put too much on a lighter fabric, that the purple sometimes doesn't fade all the way away. <laughs> I don't like that. Nope, I don't like that piece there. Let's use this one.
So what is everybody working on right now? What are y'all working on? Do you have any big projects going on? I feel like I'm so out of touch with everybody since we're not going live every day. <laughs> did you create that in Inkscape? I most certainly did. That is my go-to software for creating my SVGs. I love Inkscape. Let's see, let's use one of these little squares. Ella, you're making mask. Let me scoot this down this way. There we go. Let's see. Ooh, speak the truth. You're making some placemats. <laughs> Debbie says lunch. I'm working on lunch. Yeah, I wolfed my lunch down. <laughs> right before we started. Peggy, you're making a memory quilt. I just finished quilting the quilt you see behind me up on the wall last night. I have the binding left to do. And then that project's done. Oh, goodness. We'll have to trim this one up, too. That's all right. Not even going to stress over that. Let's get one of these longer, skinnier pieces. Vicki, you're making the grandkids some quilts. Sherry, you're playing online bingo. I've been playing an online slot machine, which <laughs> it's just a great way to de-stress. De <laughs> I've been hitting a lot of jackpots today, this morning, though. I don't know why, but those mindless games... I don't have to think and strategize and I just hit the button and <laughs> play. <laughs> kind of like this project. I don't have to strategize. I'm just playing. It's all just fun. And it doesn't take a lot of concentration and focus and accuracy. Kind of really like that. Nevada is going into mandatory mask wearing tomorrow. Yeah, Virginia's been doing that for a couple of weeks. Anita, you had to put your t-shirt quilt away because of the interfacing shortage. Yeah, I know. I know. Linda, you'll be working on your grandson's quilt. That is coming right along. Oh, that's too close to the same size. I want to change it up a little bit. Dun, 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 dun. Let's find something like... You know what? If you don't have the right size that you're looking for, you can just cut a piece, right? <laughs> There we go. That's like the size I wanted. You see how you don't even have to really pre-cut anything. You could just sit here with your scrap pile and cut your pieces out. I don't know if y'all can hear my bird or not, but he's throwing a fit. Tappy, tappy, tappy right there. Let's bring in this little tiny piece. 
Ooh, D, you got some 911 in the mail today. All right, we have one more piece, one more piece. What is going to be the lucky piece? Let's do, ooh, here's one. Let's cut it. Perfect. <laughs> Just gluing up the edges and put a little bit right in the center. What I like and why I chose to use the glue stick is because uh, it's pretty flexible. It's not a really stiff glue. Sometimes when you use like the wet glue, like Elmer School glue, it can get a little stiff. And I don't plan on washing this. So the glue's just gonna stay in there or else I would use wet glue, but I don't wanna wash it. And I don't want my project to be stiff. So there we go. There's our faux wonky border. I'm gonna press all of this with my iron. Let me get on my little fabric palette scooted out of the way earlier when I was setting up this kind of reminded me of like a watercolor palette the way I had it all sitting out <laughs> now I'm going to save this for future projects it's going to go in a little box let me get my iron warming up we're going to take this off for a minute <clears throat> Miss Linda, are you talking about uh, the project I did with a pocket? This one? While my uh, iron is heating up, I'm going to put the specs on for this project that I did. This one's skinnier. It's nine and a half inches wide by 18 uh, inches long. So it's longer and skinnier. And then the pocket piece is nine and a half by 12 inches and you just fold it in half and that gives you a six inch tall pocket. So there are the specs on the screen for this project. My chalkboard one, I'm not going to put a pocket on. It's just gonna look like a little wall sign. I wanted it to look like a chalkboard, but I didn't have any white vinyl. Get this warming up. I'm gonna scoop my pressing board right over. Just like this. And y'all don't mind all the green paint. That's from a couple videos ago. <laughs> I still haven't pulled this off and washed it yet. So now I'm just gonna heat set and dry all that glue. The first pieces we put on might actually already be dry. But I wanna make sure that it's all dry before we bring it over to the iron. So I'm just gonna hit it with the iron. I'm not ironing, I'm just pressing just long enough to dry that glue. There is colored chalk. Yeah, I guess you could leave this blank, couldn't you? And just draw with chalk right on there. Ooh, that's an idea. Oh, I've already cut the vinyl now. <laughs> but yes, you could do that, couldn't you? You could write right on this with chalk. That would be adorable. You could put this on the fridge and write little messages on it. Because you are uh, sewing down the edges, when it's all filled up, you could just throw it in the wash and start all over again. That's a great idea. Where do you find the description box for the links? Okay, so it depends on what kind of device you're watching the video on. If you're watching from a cell phone or maybe like an iPad or something like that, look next to the title of the video. There's a little gray arrow. It kind of points down. You'll click on that and that opens the description box. You have to leave the chat 
to do it. Okay, you leave the chat, the live chat, and you go to the video, and uh, yeah, right next to the title, you'll see a little gray arrow. And if you're watching on a computer, uh, you'll leave the live chat, and um, let's see, you'll look underneath of the title of the video, there should be a little caption that says, see more or see description. It might be underneath the title or towards the center underneath the title, but somewhere there should be a clickable place that opens up the description box. Miss Linda, nope, it's not chalk fabric. It is just a dark charcoal gray. It's not quite black but it's the closest thing I had in my stash to what would look like a chalkboard. I want my little sign to look like a chalkboard with a wonky border. <laughs> you could use any color fabric to make your sign out of, right? I'm just gonna trim up these little extra tidbits now that everything is nice and dry. I'm just gonna do it by hand Just like that. And there was one more over here. So there we go. The look how <laughs> nice and easy that is. It doesn't take any math. The hardest math part you have to do is measuring the fabric to cut it out, right? <laughs> That's the hardest part. Now, we're going to bring in... Let's go ahead and bring in our graphics. I'm going to iron these down into place. It's going to be kind of hard to do upside down. I know that black kind of washes out the fabric. So just bear with me for a minute. Uh, I know it's kind of washed out on the screen. I'm just going to put that kind of in the center and I'm just eyeballing it really. Yeah, that looks cute. There we go. Just do it just a little bit like this. I'm gonna take a pressing cloth. You could use a Teflon sheet. One actually comes with the Casa vinyl, but it's way over there. I'm just gonna take a scrap piece of, this is actually a bed sheet, <laughs> and just cover the carrier sheet and we're going to fuse the vinyl right in place. I have my iron set on uh, the highest cotton setting, but no steam. There's actually instructions uh, included, but we're just gonna wing it. It tells you how long to do this for. <laughs> let's see. Actually, yes, let's see. Reheat your iron. Set iron dial between cotton and linen. 305 if using a heat press. Press iron with medium firm pressure for 10 to 15 seconds. When the carrier sheet is cooled, you can then peel it off. 10 to 15 seconds. I have not been timing this. But what's kind of nice is if it doesn't easily lift up, you just press it some more. <laughs> How can you write on it? You could use fabric markers. Uh, Mimsy had a great idea. You could use chalk if you used a dark background like I'm using. You could write on it in chalk and then wash it and clean the slate. But uh, like my mom's project, I used a light fabric. It was white. And uh, if you didn't have a trans like a cutting machine you could trace images on there and then use fabric markers or free motion quilting to quilt in your design all different kinds of possibilities yay jackie you made it ella said uh, you could use friction pens I've not been timing this, y'all. <laughs> uh, 
and I've not been applying pressure. Oh, I miss seeing y'all every day too. I do. I feel so out of touch with everybody. Let's let that cool off and see if we've done it long enough. Sheila, we're going to be here for a little bit. You might want to go cook dinner so he doesn't get impatient. And then you can come back on the replay. <laughs> we don't want to make him impatient waiting for his dinner. We're going to let that cool off for a second. I'm getting ready to pull the carrier sheet off the vinyl. We're going to throw some batting up underneath of this. And then I'm going to stitch down at least half of the little stitches so you can see how I do that. We might not stitch all of them down. We'll be here for, for a good little bit if we did that. And then I'll show you how I use the back as the binding. So that's what we have left. Let me see if it's on there enough. Nope. We still got to put, put some heat to it. And some pressure, Lisa. Ooh, Mimsy says you could hand embroider. Yeah, there's all different kinds of ways. You get real creative with putting your own design in the middle, right? Dun, dun, dun. Gonna take a second. I'm just putting pressure. <laughs> now I will say that's one of the things that I love about my heat press because you just set it, you set the temperature, you set the time, you pull it down, you pull it up, and it's done, right? You do have to be a little bit more patient, but I love that this vinyl offers both ways to apply it, right? Because not everybody has space for one of those big heat presses. It does work with the Cricut Easy Press. Yes. I have the smaller Cricut Easy Press. I wish I would have waited to get the larger one, but they were sold out of the larger ones when I went. So I settled for the small one. So I have to move it around. And then I got the bigger heat press. So. Andy, you have a really good point. The heat press gives off a smell. I will tell you, when I first got my heat press, uh, the first two times I used it, the smell permeated my room. It was strong, and it was not good. But that went away. Now when I plug it in, it doesn't smell. Different materials, like when I do screen printing, the screen printing ink might have a smell to it, or the vinyl, but it's not very strong. At least I haven't used any that is very like offensive. The heat press itself, when I first got it, that was offensive and it permeated my room. But after the second time using it, that went away. So I'm just trying to cool off that carrier sheet. Let's try again. Nope. <laughs> nope. I'm going to use a burst of steam because that's really when my iron gets the hottest. I have to heat it up this way. Let's do the same thing over here. Barbara, you love your heat. I love mine too. Oh my goodness. It is really sped up putting the interfacing on my t-shirts. I think one thing is I'm not putting any pressure on this, y'all. Let me stand up for a second. It is really sped up the process of interfacing on my t-shirts for quilts. And like I made this shirt, 
super fast and easy. It was faster than this. <laughs> A lot faster. Uh, Studio 831. I'm using CASA. K-A-S-S-A. Oh, yeah. Andy, if you just got a heat press and you've only used it a couple times, that smell is just from it being new. It will go away. It's strong, though, isn't it? <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know if I can use this thing. But it went away, so that was good. I'm going to really cool this off. So great to see y'all. I miss seeing y'all on a more regular everyday basis. I feel like I'm out of touch with everybody. I feel like so much is happening. You're making so many projects that I don't even know about. All right, let's try this again, my glory. There we go. It just needed more heat. <laughs> Oh, it still needs more heat. Let's try it this way. This carrier sheet is super, super duper thick. Super duper thick. <laughs> you just have to be patient, which I am not. Any idea when interfacing will be available? Nope. <laughs> I do. I have a feeling it's not going to be anytime soon, Miss Jill. We talked about that last week. Uh, you know, Pelon is still sending it out, but not as regular, and it's not as much as they were. They're working with limited staff. Uh, so the stores are getting it. It's just, it's not fast enough to keep up with the demand for it. All right. Look, my iron is leaking. Come on. Maybe this time is the charm. Nothing ever works right in a live video. Have you ever noticed that? I did my mom sign without the heat press and it did not take this long. Let's wait for that to cool off. It did not take this long the other day. Do it, you can do it. You can do it, you can do it. Thank you. So you just need patience, <laughs> which I have very little of today, I guess. There we go. All right. All right. So there's our graphics. I'm just going to give this one more press. I'm going to cover it now for sure. And just press that. Sheila, you love the blue? I was hoping it kind of looked like chalk. I didn't have any white. This was the closest thing to white that I have left until my new 
white vinyl comes in, but it's still cute, right? There we go. Isn't that cute? All right. So yeah, let me show you because there's no uh, fusible on the backside of these fabric scraps. You will get some fraying like this. That's one of the reasons why we're going to go ahead and sew everything down. But to prevent that, if you use like a heat and bond light and this bothers you, the heat and bond light does prevent or helps prevent a lot of the fraying. It doesn't totally take it away, but it does help prevent that. So for this project, we're going to layer it with batting. I have a piece of batting that's 15 by 15. It might be a smidgen bigger, but that's okay. We'll trim it down. We're going to line it up just like this and like this. Like that and like that. I'm going to take some glue stick. We're going to glue base this. I almost used my chap stick. That would not have been good. I'm just going to glue baste all of these layers so it stays right in place. Screw it down just a little bit. And now we're just going to dry that glue and then we'll be ready to sew. Thank you, Celeste. Thank you. Yeah, if you came in, let's see, I'm going to take this off the screen. So I've had on the screen the uh, measurements for my parents project and I'll pull that over just in case you missed it if you're just coming in I'll show you that project but you can go back on the watch on the replay and watch how I put that together I do a little brief uh, explanation of how I put it together let me get the glue dried on this and let it be cooling down first and then I'll show you my parents project it's a different size than the one i'm creating today and that one has a pocket so those are the measurements on the screen for that one for today's project these are the measurements and i'm just gluing the glue that I basted the top down with at this point. So there we go. We're going to let that cool off. Let me bring in my parents project in case you missed it. It's an Elmer's glue stick, Elmer's washable glue stick. Those pretty simple. You can find those all kinds of places, right? This is the one I did for my parents. It has the two pockets. It's a six inch tall pocket. What are the pockets for? Uh, my parents are gonna put this in their camper and they wanted a place to keep the remote so it doesn't keep sliding across the table. <laughs> so she wanted pockets. So you could do it with or without the pocket, right? She wanted pockets. So they're gonna put the remote in one of them and have a place that that always goes and then who knows what'll go in the other pocket. To create the two pockets, I just sewed a line right down the middle, but uh, you could leave this as one open pocket or you could decorate this whole thing and leave the pockets off completely, right? So on this one, I did all three layers before I stitched my wonky border. So when I stitched my wonky border, it acted as the quilting through all three layers, which is really cute. You can see that on the back. This one, we're going to leave the backing off and we're gonna stitch only through the top and the batting 
stitch these in place and quilt this and then put a nice flat backing on when we're done. Right? I think that's nice and cool. So now our project is ready to come to the sewing machine. Now, to stitch this down, you could use any uh, stitches in your machine, right? You could put your free motion foot on and really breeze through this really fast, right? Uh, you could do a zigzag stitch. A satin stitch would be more finished. And if you want to wash a project where you're going to do this little funky faux border and you want to wash it and you don't want any fraying, I do suggest a stitch that's going to cover the raw edge completely, like a satin stitch. This is going to be just an art wall quilt that will probably never get washed. It might get, you know, hand washed or something. Uh, and I don't, I personally, for my art quilts, don't mind a little fraying. I think it adds a little cuteness. So I'm going to use a different stitch. The stitch I'm going to use on my machine, I'm going to draw it out because you might have this stitch. It's one that goes like, yeah, let me use this marker. You'll be able to see it. Let's see. It looks like a line. So it goes straight and then it goes over here. It goes over there. Straight over here, over there. Straight here and there. So this is how it stitches. And this is actually what the machine setting looks like <laughs> on my machine. So if you have a stitch that looks like that, that's the stitch I'm using to sew it down. And let me tell you one of the reasons why I picked this one. <laughs> because when I'm stitching this line right here, I wanted to stitch both pieces at the same time. You could do a zigzag stitch that's wide enough to catch them both. You could do that too. But I kind of really like, it almost looks like a blanket stitch, but not, right? And uh, so that's the stitch I'm going to use. I have some black thread in my sewing machine, top and bottom. And that's what I'm going to use to stitch these down. This is a border. We haven't done the binding yet. The binding will be done as soon as we're done. And I'm going to go through and stitch one good side with you. And I'm going to switch over to the sewing machine so that you can see me do that. I don't think I want to take the time to stitch the whole thing. I'll finish that all up this evening when I can turn on some music and just enjoy the process because it will take a good little while. But I want you to see it being done at least for one side. You're welcome, Carol. Uh, hopefully you can come back on the replay and see how this turns out. Why aren't you quilting through all three layers? You can do it either way. Miss Jill, you can do it either way. You could quilt through all three layers if you want to. And in this one, I'm not. Uh, it's going to be on the wall. No one's ever going to see it. And so to me, it doesn't make any difference. Uh, you could do it through all three layers if you want to. All right, let me get my sewing machine set up. I'm going to flip you through to the sewing machine. There we go. On my machine, it is a setting a number five with an eye foot. So let me switch the foot over to the eye foot. Again, I have black in the top and the bobbin. These are all things that you would customize for yourself, right? In the project that you're doing. I'm going to pick, let's see, one, two, three. Number five. That's the stitch that I want. I'm going to set it as wide as it'll go. Well, no, not that wide. 6.0. Let's see what that looks like. I always test my stitch out on a scrap to see what it's going to look like before I bring in my project. And that way, if you want to make any adjustments, you could do it now. That looks pretty good. 
yeah, I like that. 6.0. Now we're just going to bring in our piece. I'm going to start right at the edge. And now we're just stitching down all these raw edges. Yay. <laughs> When I get to the edge here, I'm going to cut the thread and then start back up here and complete that and go around that way. Oh, that's going to be so cute. Turn it. I'm going to do a sideways stitch. I went too far. There we go. Oh, that's going to be super cute. See that? <laughs> I love the black thread. I love the black thread. Now we're going to pick up on this piece. Right where it sits next to the other and we'll pick up there. another sideways stitch in this corner and then turn it all the way back around finish off this seam between both pieces we'll pick back up where that piece meets the other piece This time when we get down to this piece, I'm gonna break the thread and then pick up on the edge of the quilt and do this whole piece like that. And we're gonna do this side together so that you can kind of get a really good idea of what this is gonna look like all finished. Oh, I think this is going to be so cute. Flip it back around, pick back up on this seam.
we'll do this last, this little corner block together, and then I'm going to show you how this looks. I took one stitch too many. There we go. I think that is going to be so adorable. It does look like old patches. I'm going to show you. It does look like little old patches, right? Of course, I have all these little threads that I'll have to go through and trim off once it's all done, right? But doesn't it look like old patchwork, right? So cute. And y'all, we did not piece this border together. It's not sewn together. It's just placed one piece next to the other. If you came in later and you missed that part, you'll have to go back on the replay. But that is not sewn together. It's not pieced. It's faux pieced, right? Look how cute that is. It does look like hand stitching. You came in a late, Miss Andrea. The stitch we're using, it looks like this on my sewing machine. I don't know the technical name of this stitch takes a stitch and then goes to the left and right, takes a stitch left and right. On my machine, it looks just like this. Shirley, you'll have to come back on the replay, all right, because I'm gonna show you exactly uh, how to put it together so fast, so fast. Mimsy, you want an explanation of how I turned the corners? Let me find another index card and I'll show you. All right, so let's pretend this is my quilt and uh, I wanna be careful not to mark on my quilt, but there we go. That's the little patch, right? So I'm starting here with my needle at the edge of my quilt. It takes, let me get a different marker. It took one stitch straight and then went to the left and to the right. It came back to the center, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, right. And if you happen to catch it perfectly right at the center, I stop with my needle right next to my scrap. And then I pivot the quilt so that it took a stitch here here and then I stopped and I finished pivoting so that now the straight line is here like this. It doesn't always work that you catch the needle exactly in that corner, <laughs> but when it does, I like to do this little sideways stitch. You don't have to do it that way. But if I catch the needle right, I like that little sideways stitch. Frankenstein stitch, yes, it does. Ooh, Anita, that's a great idea too. Nightmare before Christmas, yeah, yeah. You, I mean, y'all don't have to do the camper design, right? It's just what I want on mine. You could do all kinds of applique, all kinds of designs. You could do free motion quilting, all kinds of stuff. My main focus was uh, in this video to show you how you can do that fast wonky border with a glue stick and just scraps. I mean, here's my scrap, my little scrap cup, right? <laughs> Isn't he cute? Yeah, you could make placemats this way. Absolutely. Scraps, they did not have any heat and bond, no fusible on the back. It was just done with a glue stick. No thinking, no concentrating, no accurate quarter inch seam allowance. And it breezes through really fast. 
really fast. So let me show you how I plan to put the backing on this, which I'm not going to do the whole thing because I, I really want to do the rest of the stitching all the way to the edge before I fully put on the back. But I'm going to show you what it's going to look like. Let me move this pressing board. Thank you, Jill. All right, Miss Gundy, uh, come back later on the replay. So here's my backing fabric. And in case y'all just joined, let me pull up the measurements for today's project on the screen. These are the specs for this project. There is no written pattern for it, but you can write it down in case you want to make the same size. My backing fabric is cut precisely to 17 by 17 inches. That's going to give me a binding using the backing fabric, right? So you will just base this right to the backing, just like this. You'll leave, you want to measure an inch around and really center that in place, just like that. And I would glue baste it. That's my preferred method for basting. <laughs> oh, you can't see it. Here we go. See how there's an extra inch all the way around? I do have a video that shows you um, how to do this whole process on my channel, but they're they're all they're on YouTube as well, not just my videos. But uh, I will first fold the extras in half and press that just like that. And then it gets folded one more time up and over just like that. So won't that be so cute? I want to finish stitching this before I do it all the way. But I want to give you an idea of what it's going to look like. If you want to see this project soon as I'm done, I'll post pictures on my Facebook. So you can check that out when I'm all finished with it. I will be uploading pictures on Elisa Cape and Quilts on Facebook. There's a link for my Facebook in the description box. But that's how I use the backing as the binding. So once this is all folded over on all sides, I use glue to keep it in place. I'll take and do a straight stitch right close to the edge and that'll permanently secure my binding. And so when you flip this over, the back is going to be nice and flat with no quilting on this one, but you will see the stitch where we stitch down the binding, right? And I do it this way sometimes because uh, a couple reasons. For one, you're not going to see the back of this project. It's going to be up on the wall. Uh, and two, when I cut my backing fabric exactly set the measurement it needs to be. If you quilt it all three layers and you've cut this exactly the same size, sometimes the quilting draws draws the backing in a little bit. And so, uh, you know, you have to keep that in mind. If you want to quilt all three layers, don't cut your backing exactly true to size. Make it a little bit bigger just in case the quilting does draw it in and then cut your backing again once all your quilting is done. Have you ever cut a backing that you're gonna use as binding and cut it exactly the size and then quilted your project and then you found out that some of your backing puckered, up, puckered in a little bit <laughs> and when you do your binding, it shows on the front just a little bit? So there's that. If you wanna quilt all three layers, cut it bigger than what you need. And once it's quilted, cut it 17 by 17. But you can do it both ways. Right? How will you hang this up? This is going in uh, a camper. And so uh, my mom found out the hard way. She used some command strips for a hanging basket for fruit. And uh, didn't know that you had to leave the adhesive command strip on the wall for 24 hours before you apply any weight to it. And so the wall got a little bit messed up. So she wanted something personalized to cover up that small little thing that, sh that happened. So she's going to actually use Velcro. 
because it's going on a camper wall. And we're going to put some double-sided uh, Velcro at the top and the bottom, some really strong ones. And then this will Velcro to her camper wall. I'm gonna do the same thing with mine because if you wanna change it down the road, you just pull it off and you can put something new up. Stargazer, uh, I do have an Instagram, but I don't ever use it. I don't ever use my Instagram. It's too much to keep up with. Facebook and YouTube and every once in a while I'll remember to post something over on Pinterest. <laughs> but yeah, I don't keep up with my Instagram very much. All of my stuff on Instagram is from a couple years ago, I think. Just going through, going through. So yeah, there's my mom's project and here is mine. I still have three sides of the border to stitch down, but I don't wanna make y'all have to wait <laughs> while I do that. That stitch is not the fastest, but it's super cute, right? I really like that a lot. Let me bring it up close so you can really see. Isn't that cute? Of course you could use any of the stitches on your machine. I think it's adorable. Yeah, the social media, I have a hard time keeping up. I'm gonna tell you, I get messages. Uh, I try to keep up with comments on YouTube the best that I can, but that's overwhelming sometimes. And then you have Facebook and emails. And I get messages on Etsy. So there's all these different things, you know. Yeah, it gets overwhelming sometimes. How do you do the corner binding? So, uh, sorry, I had a little thing on my computer. I do have a video that'll show you like really precise. Oh, goodness. It's starting a scan of my hardware. I hope that doesn't mess up my life. <laughs> so the first fold, you'll fold all of your sides in to where the raw edge meets the raw edge of your quilt and you'll press those. I like putting a little bit of glue stick in there and then press it and the glue stick really holds it nice and flat. Once you do all your sides like that, uh, you will take the first side and uh, flip it over onto your quilt and I like to glue stick that into place and then you're going to take this side and I put a little glue stick there and you fold it 90 degrees just like that to the edge of your quilt and you press that and dry the glue and flatten that seam but see this will also yeah so do it like that like that, and then you can fold this side over to meet that side. I don't want to do it on camera because I'm not quite I'm not quite there yet. I'm not quite there. So I'm gonna just do a little demonstration. So that does give you a little mitered corner, just like that. See that? I'm just holding it in place. Do you use glue sticks on quilts or just craft projects? I glue based everything. I glue based my binding on my quilts. <laughs> I glue based applique on my quilts. Can you give me in more information on where to get your graphics and how you transfer your graphics onto the vinyl ones? Yes, uh, all of my camping stuff is in my Etsy shop, okay? So there's a link to my Etsy shop. There's an actual uh, page in my shop Here, let me grab this there's a page in my Etsy shop that's just the camping stuff so uh, there's five files that you get a PDF in case you don't have a cutting software you could trace this onto your art quilt and then you get the SVG of this so you could cut that out in vinyl there's five different ones I'm just gonna go through them real quick. 
There's those. That's cute. That's the one I use for my mom's. See, isn't that so cute? And then I put their names at the bottom. And uh, so there's those. And then uh, for those who might want to make t-shirts <laughs> and sell them, there's lots and lots of campers out there. Uh, I have this set. It's five blank backgrounds. So you could customize them. Maybe you already have camper SVGs. Uh, maybe you want to just put someone's name in here, right? So these are blank. You get these five SVGs. That's a set. And then I designed the campers. So you get the five camper SVGs as a set. So you could get this set and this set and make endless projects, right? Because you could put the little pop-up with that background. Or you could put the little, <laughs> you know, any one of these on any one of those. Mix and match. So like I made my t-shirt, but you can also make the little art quilts too, right? Or cut them out of cardstock and make greeting cards. You can change the sizes, all that fun stuff that you can do with the cutting machine. <laughs> the cutting machine is so versatile. I'm gonna tell you, it not only he transferred vinyl, I cut this, I would cut this out of fabric with my brother Skin and Cut and do this, treat this like applique. That would be a lot of fun, right? You don't have to use the heat transfer vinyl. High temp or low temp? Uh, let's see, it depends on the vinyl that you're using. This one, the CASA, you know, whatever vinyl you're using comes with specific instructions and they're all different. This one is the CASA. Uh, I usually use my heat press, which is set at like 305. And then if you're using an iron, it tells you to do the cotton and linen setting. Uh, if you're using heat press, it's 305 Fahrenheit. And then it tells you the times. And this is a cool peel. You peel the transfer sheet off when it's cooled down. So this one's kind of nice because you don't have to have the heat press but uh, I showed pressing this on and it took forever. <laughs> it took forever, but uh, I did show that. So if you missed that part, you can, catch, you can go back and watch that. Susan says, you can keep going if you want to. I'll watch. <laughs> I just don't want y'all to get bored. So yeah, uh, in the description box, there are links. Uh, there's a link to my Etsy shop. That's everything in my Etsy shop. And then there's a link for the camping stuff. If you're interested in that. And then there's the links to my Facebook. You can see a finished picture of this once I get the rest of the stitching done and the little binding. I'll post a picture on my Facebook and then there's a link to the creative crew group. I love that group y'all. We are over 3000 members now and everyone is so helpful. We see all kinds of projects, not just quilting projects, but crochet and uh, cooking projects. We see bread, handmade bread. Uh, we saw an apple crisp the other day. I'm still waiting for that recipe too. <laughs> And uh, so, yeah, if you haven't joined Creative Crew Group and you're on Facebook, the link to that is down in the description box. Oh, the glue gun heat setting. I wouldn't use a glue gun. No. Uh, I use the school glue glue stick, and then I use my iron on a cotton setting to dry the glue. Sherry, I'm keeping you dry. You're on your way to Vegas. I wish I could go with you. That would be so much fun. Oh. That would be, I hope you have a blast. You work so hard, you deserve it, but I wish I could go with you. 
Nope, I would not put a grilled cheese sandwich, Miss Diane, on your heat press unless you want to clean up the mess. Yeah, Jill, I think once we're done, go back and watch because it'll all make a lot more sense. It'll all make a lot more sense if you do. But yes, this is not pieced. They're just glued on with a glue stick. That means they're not permanent. You will need to stitch them down, but you just pick a little decorative stitch in your sewing machine. Isn't that cute? I love that so much. And you can do this part before you put it on the backing, or you can make all of your layers and do it after, and it'll quilt through the backing as well. So super fast super fast and it doesn't take any like concentration it's like putting together a puzzle and you can have a show on in the background and it doesn't you won't mess up your seams there's no math <laughs> there's no math bye miss debbie i'm gonna get with you about a sewing day Sewing and lunch. Lunch is important. Thank you, Diane. Thank you. Is Vegas open? Yes, I think Vegas is open. I think I saw that on the news the other day. So, yes, it's been a lot of fun to hang out with you this afternoon. I'm really glad I could share this little process with you. Susan, you just checked your machine. You don't have that exact stitch, but you have one similar. Oh, so yours are offset from one another. I know what you're saying. So yours looks like... This, 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 like that. That would be cute too, right? That would be cute too. Yeah, my machine has a million different decorative stitches. I may not ever use all of them, but I thought for this project, let me pick one that I haven't used before. And I like this one because when I'm stitching this, it stitches both sides, <laughs> right? Debbie, you sent me your number. Yes, I got that earlier. Yes. Do you have a favorite place to get fabric? I'm new at this. So before we go, Stargazer wants to know, do you have a favorite place to get fabric? I am not super picky <laughs> where I get my fabric from, y'all. I, I can find quality fabric at all places. I shop at Joann's. There is fabric that you should stay away from there. And there, I have found some good quality fabric at Joann's. I'm not against buying fabric from Joann's. I'm not against buying fabric from Walmart. You just have to learn what to stay away from and what is decent quality, right? So I shop all different kinds of places and I'm not partial to any of them. I look for, you know, it depends on what I'm using it for uh, and what's available. And you know what? I quilt on a budget. Prices do matter to me. So if I can get a quality fabric, for a decent, reasonable price, then that's where I go. <laughs> so I'm not partial, but to the rest of you, where is your favorite place to buy fabric? Sheila, your dinner is ready. When are you back on? Uh, we'll definitely be here next Thursday at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. I don't know what we're doing yet. And if anything were to change with that, I would do some kind of notification to let you know. Bye, Miss Linda.
Thank you, Stitch Pennies. It is nice. It's nice to have some interaction with everybody. Mim Mimsy said, uh, much of her, her fabric is reclaimed from Goodwill and clothes that no longer fit. I love using clothing in my quilts. I love recycled denim. I love button front shirts, the plaid ones or the check ones. Oh, those are some of my favorite fabrics. Friday at 1-ish is when we're going to be doing a Zoom on the Creative Crew group. Yay, you're going to you're going to get a Facebook account. Yeah, you don't have to use fa all the portions of Facebook to join us on Facebook, right? You don't have to have a million friends to do a Facebook just to come join the Creative Crew group and keep up with everybody over there. Uh, when you join Creative Crew group, there are two security questions that you have to ask. They're not hard questions, but we can't join you in unless you ask answer the two security questions. Uh, I have a moderator. Her name is Maureen. She helps me moderate Creative Crew Group, and uh, she works so hard, y'all. And between the two of us, we like keeping a tight ship, and any nonsense happening over there is to a minimum because we kind of filter no fake accounts, hopefully. Just answer the two security questions when you come join, and we bring you right in. So much sharing over there. I'm going to tell you why. If you are in a rut, if you're in a creative low, if you're in a dry spell or you're just out of inspiration, groups like the Creative Crew group are so helpful because you just go through Facebook for a little bit and you see everybody's projects and it's so much inspiration. And if you have issues with your project, you take a picture of it and you share it there. More than likely, you're going to get some kind of direction to go in. Someone over there more than likely has some suggestions for you. We have fixed tension issues with machines during Zooms on Creative Crew Group. We've uh, yeah, so much stuff. We do Zooms on Creative Crew. I can see you and you can see me and we talk like we're in the same room. That's done on Creative Crew. Three forty nine. Holy moly. That's a lot of people. I think that's a record for our live. So in case y'all just joined in, you're going to have to come back on the replay. There's a lot of chatting going on because we are live, but you'll be able to skip around during the replay. I show you how to do this faux wonky border. It's not pieced. It's all glued down scraps. There's no fusibles on the back. You just pull out your little scrap, your scrap bowl. And I used a glue stick. So very budget friendly, super duper cute project. I gave you the measurements on the taller, skinnier one. This one I gave you the measurements for. And this one has two pockets. You could do the pocket or leave that off. And then uh, I give you the measurements here on the screen right now for this one. And I used a dark charcoal fabric to kind of make it look like a chalkboard. Right? I think it would have really looked more like a chalkboard if I would have had white vinyl, but... I'm all out. <laughs> so we glued down the pieces together and then I stitched this side down with you in today's video. I'm going to finish off camera because it's going to take a little bit, but yep, these are the two projects with the faux wonky border. You'll have to come back on the replay if you missed any of it.
Yeah, yeah. If you don't want to use Facebook, I totally get it. My own personal Facebook, I don't post that much stuff on my own personal Facebook page. I'm pretty active on Lisa Cape and Quilts. Like I post pictures of my commission stuff so my clients can come check out the process of their quilts being made from start to finish. And then when I do little projects like this, I'll post them. Every once in a while, I go live on that page. And then on Creative Crew Group, it's, I'm really the host. Uh, I don't post a lot of stuff in Creative Crew Group every once in a while. But I'm really more hosting a place where creatives can come together. And again, it's not just quilting stuff. It's all genres of creativity. So, yeah, if you paint, we'd love to see your paintings. Y'all are so welcome. Y'all are so welcome. I'm so glad our internet has held out for the most part today, right? Our internet's held up pretty well. The other night we were doing a live on Creative Crew Group and I was having internet issues and I was like, oh Lord, please let it work on Thursday. All right, everybody. Uh, if you're on Facebook or if you're creating a free Facebook account so that you can join us on Creative Crew Group, keep your eyes out. Lisa Cape and Quilts. The link is down in the description box for finished pictures of this. As soon as I get the other three sides done and the little binding from the backing done, I will post a finished picture so you get to see what it looks like all finished. I will post that as soon as I'm done. In the meantime, I hope you have lots of fun. Maybe you can use this bow border in another project that you want to make. I hope so. I hope so. I just wanted to pass that along. It's so fast and easy. Math free. And uh, yeah, until I see you next Thursday for sure here, I don't know what we're doing. I have no idea. <laughs> But hopefully it'll be something that you're interested in. And uh, if anything, we'll just have fun and chatting for a little bit, right? I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. For sure, I'll see you next Thursday. Thanks for joining me today. Bye, everybody.